Hi, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Nikon, and welcome to the tutorial where we show you how to use fidget sensors to control your Nikon camera. This is very easy to do in Control My Nikon, and you might be wondering, what is a fidget? Well, a fidget is a robotic sensor, and I'm just going to bring up a, a diagram. So here's a diagram of how this is all connected to your computer. And uh, so we have your camera, it's connected to, with a USB cable back to control my icon on running on a laptop or a desktop or a netbook. This fidget interface board here connects with a USB cable on, into your computer. And the sensors connect into the interface board. So here we have a vibration sensor, here is a reflective sensor so it measures uh, proximity, and here is a light sensor. We're going to try this one here right away in the demo. So these sensors connect to the board and they relay their sensor data to Control My Nikon. So you can then tell Control My Nikon what to do when the sensor data changes. So maybe you'd like when a shadow falls over a light sensor, you wanted to trigger the shutter. Fidget is actually a company that produces robotic sensors for robotics hobbyists. And this is similar to the Arduino line of sensors. These sensors are fairly inexpensive. You can pick up an interface board and a sensor or two for maybe $100 or $150 US. They're ready to use right out of the box. Here we have the different I.O. boards and the I.O. board in particular that we use is the 1018. And we're going to connect our sensor into this very first slot here. That's a slot zero. Now, once you have one of these boards, you can also connect different sensors to it. So you have a distance or range sensor. Here's infrared sensors. Longer range sensors. Different cabling for them. Force and pressure sensors. Touch sensors. different kind of motion sensors, environmental sensors where you may want to take a picture when the temperature changes or the humidity changes. And so you can see there's a lot of different possibilities here. The main thing that Control My Nikon provides is just the interface to this interface board from fidgets to allow you to build any kind of sensor triggered system to trigger your shutter using Control My Nikon. So let's take a closer look at these sensors and the interface board. And here's our uh, fidget devices and you can see on the left we have four sensors and we have the main interface board on the right. Let's take a closer look at this board. So this is the particular board that you need to use in Control My Icon. It's the part number 1018, and you need to use the connector on the left-hand side. There. There's eight connectors, you need to use the very first one. I believe that is uh, connector is zero. We'll take a look at these sensors. Now this is a force sensor, and it has this very thin uh, force sensor attached to the end here. And you basically anything that uh, touches that will be uh, detected. And a vibration sensor, same idea, but not quite as sensitive. And this is a position sensor, so it uses uh, an infrared uh, small transmitter and receiver on the front of the circuit board. And so it's only good within about 10 centimeters from the circuit board. And this one will detect any changes in light. Now to connect these, you first of all need to connect it to your computer through a USB cable. And that's with the, the small connector at the end. And then we'll connect a sensor to the first port on the left-hand side. So the cable comes with the sensor. And we're going to try connecting the light sensor. 
and it has a small three wire cable and we'll connect it to the board. And we'll connect this to the interface board. Make sure to connect it on that very first port. That's it. It's all connected and ready for use. So once you have the sensor physically connected to the interface board, you need to ensure that it is working properly within Windows, first of all. So I'm just going to shut down and control my Nikon. And when you purchase Fidget, it uh, comes with drivers, so it's able to read the USB port. And it comes with some utilities to help you calibrate your sensor and ensure that it's functioning properly. And I'm just going to bring up uh, the Fidget utility. This is called the Fidget Control Panel. And here we can see it is detecting that the Fidget interface board is connected. Okay. And uh, now I'll just double click on this and we'll see what sensors are connected to that board. And it's saying that there is something connected on port zero. These are the different analog inputs. So uh, here we have port zero where we plugged in. Now I have currently a light sensor attached to this. I'm just going to pass my hand over the sensor as I cast a shadow on it. And you'll see this analog in number decrease. So here my hand goes over it right about now and it's now casting a shadow, so now my hand is fully over it. It's fairly dark, and now I'm going to move my hand again so it becomes illuminated. The computer is reading the inputs on port zero on this board. Now once you're able to see that it is functioning here on the Fidget's utilities, you can just close that down, and then close down the control panel. You need to ensure that this control panel is closed before you use it in Control My Nikon, because only one program can use your Fidget board at a time. Okay, so let's start up Control My Nikon. And you don't need to be connected to the camera yet, but uh, let's go to the Triggers menu and down to Fidgets. And I'm also going to Trigger and Log. So we can see here that is already detected. And this will show us the intensity of the readings coming off the, uh, the Fidget sensor. And, uh, but it's not enabled yet, so I'll enable it now. I can adjust the sensitivity of the sensor here, so uh, let's put it about mid-range. This sensor right now is fully illuminated and it only goes up about halfway. Maybe I'll bring it up a little bit more. And what I want to do is trigger the shutter when a shadow passes over the light sensor. Okay, so I'm going to connect to the camera. Okay, we're connected. So, now if I pass my hand over this light sensor and cast a shadow on it again, we'll see the level will decrease. So I'm just passing my hand over it now, and it decreases. Okay, the shadow's fully over the light sensor. Now I'll move my hand away, and it's illuminated again. So now my threshold, my trigger, actually is controlled by this slider right here. I may want it to trigger when the shadow occurs. So what I'll do is I'll say invert, and I'll go and put the sensor right, the trigger right here. So now, when the level drops to the point of where the threshold is, it will trigger. So let's try it. So I'm going to move my hand over it again, and then it says threshold exceeded input, triggering. Now, it's not taking the shot yet because I haven't enabled the command. You can see there's three different commands that we could send to the camera. Shoot, AF and shoot, or to start a script. So I'm going to tell it to just shoot when a shadow passes over the sensor. So let's try this again. And you'll look on the left-hand side, uh, right down here you'll be able to see the picture being transferred. So let's move my hand over. Here comes the shadow. It caused the trigger to fire and the shutter to, to be triggered as well. I'm just going to take the command and disable it. Now this trigger reset here is very important. If uh, your light was fluctuating quite quickly, you don't want it triggering every second because the 
camera is still going to be busy transferring an image. So I'm telling it to wait at least five seconds before it possibly can trigger again. If you really move around the lighting, in this case, uh, it's only going to go once. So I'm going to move my hand back and forth over the sensor and you'll see that it only triggers once. So here goes the shadow. Okay, I'm still moving my hand back and forth over it. Doesn't make a difference. It's not going to do it again until five seconds has passed. So there it did it again. Okay, now it's ready. And it triggers. So five seconds is, is a reasonable amount of time to wait between triggers. There's some other options here as well. I'm just going to change the sensor to a vibration sensor. Okay, I've just plugged in the vibration sensor to the fidget interface board. And on this one, uh, what I like to do is trigger the shutter when it detects vibration. So currently, uh, I'm just, it's not detecting really anything. I'm just going to turn down the sensitivity and I'm not going to invert it. I'm going to say that any time the level output from the sensor exceeds my threshold value, then I would like it to take a shot. What I'm going to do is just tap the desk beside where this vibration sensor is, and uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to tap now. And there we go. So it picked up the vibration, triggered the shutter on the camera. So that's really how you set up the different sensors with your interface board and configure it within Control My Icon. No matter what kind of sensor you get, they all work the same way. Either you have to invert it or not to make it work uh, properly for triggering. Now, if you don't use fidgets and you already are using the Arduino or some other hardware, there is a way that you could send commands to Control My Icon using your very own software, and we'll have a video on that very soon. Now a very important thing to keep in mind when you're using any external trigger, and especially the fidget triggers, is latency. Let's take a look at what goes into the total latency between the detection of an input at the sensor to the actual triggering of the shutter. Let's say you had some vibration here, the vibration sensor, and once it travels here through the board, through the USB, to the laptop where the fidget drivers can decode it, it might take maybe 20 milliseconds. By the time Control My Icon can deal with this data and decide to send a triggering command to your camera, it might take another you know, 20 to 50 milliseconds. Now it needs to go down the USB, that could be another 10 milliseconds, and then finally to your camera, and every camera body is a little different, but its shutter latency varies from between 40 and 100 milliseconds. So at the very least, you're looking at at least 50 to 60 milliseconds of uh, delay up to maybe 100, 150 milliseconds. If you're attempting to do high-speed photography, this is just too slow. If you're trying to trigger the shutter based on the sound of a balloon popping so you could see the pieces of balloon kind of hanging in midair, this will be too slow. Uh, same if you're doing water drop photography where you want to detect the water drop moving past one of these sensors and then have the trigger fire so you can get a picture of the drop hitting the water or a surface, then this will be uh, likely too slow as well. So you just need to keep that in mind as you are using these sensors. That's it. That's how you use fidget triggers. Happy tethering.